All right, now on to our last exercise, the generator. So in front of us, we can see the, the hand generator we're going to do. And it works by pumping it by pushing it in like that. So what we're gonna do is see how, if we can figure out how it works. So you notice how when I pump it, that little, this thing is whipping around in there. Uh, and these are obviously coils of wire on either side of this. So this disc is actually a magnet. So right now, when this magnet isn't moving, there's no changing magnetic field, and so there's no change in the flux. Faraday's law of induction says a change in the flux will create a voltage and uh, current loop. So there's no change in the fluxes, so that means that these coils aren't picking up any sort of voltage. And you know, you aren't, you aren't, the generator doesn't work unless this magnet moves around. Because it's moving around in a circle, it creates a change in magnetic field at a constant speed, and we get pickup. This is uh, related to the Faraday this, uh, disk dynamo. In a, it's not exactly a Faraday disk dynamo, but... Um, so let's actually look now how it moves around. When I push this black handle down, this gear moves around this small spur gear, like this. Okay, this is called the rack and pinion system. This linear thing is the gear rack. This little gear right here is called a spur gear. And it's how you change linear motion into rotational motion. So uh, this has about 10, 10 gears, is about nine. So every time I pump it, it moves this thing around once. So every time I push this thing down, this whole gear moves around once. And this gear is connected to a gear underneath. You may be able to see it. So I'm gonna flip it over so you can see what's on the back. So there's this large gear here. This has about 73 gears, uh, sorry, teeth in it. 73 teeth on it. And so when this moves around once, 73 of those uh, will go past this point right here. And this one has about 10. So what happens when you push that black handle once, you've got uh, uh, about a nine to 73 ratio, and then you have to step it down because this one's smaller than this one. So this disc right here will move around seven, about seven, a little more than seven times for each stroke. Now it eventually comes to a stop because of friction. The last thing I want you to know is something called a ratchet. This is a device we use in engineering. It's, it's these, the, if you see this inner gear right here, that's where the ratchet stays. What I'm gonna do is move it a couple times so you can see this little thing. You see that little red thing moving around the inner circle? That little red thing that's moving right now is called a ratchet. So it's, and right now you can see that when I, I'm trying to push down on the black button and it's not catching. Oh, now it just caught. Do you see how it's catching on there? So it pushes it around. Uh, but going backwards, it's not catching on anything. It only catches forward in the forward direction. You see how it catches right there? It only catches in the forward direction, but not the backward direction. That's called a ratchet. So this allows me to keep pumping this, uh, and it will keep moving even though this ratchet moves backwards like this. You see when it moves backward, it doesn't stop the motion. It only makes it increase in the forward direction. Okay, so now that we've discussed how it works and the inner parts, you can fill out your data table and we're now going on to the second part of this exercise.